Welcome, everybody, to episode 162 of the Geek Dad Report, the one show dedicated, formulated, specially created to bring you guys all the nerd news you need to know, all while putting a smile on your beautiful faces. I'm Brian West, the hostess with the absolutely, positively fucking magical mostess. And I'm Ryan Thomason, and I am present. And you're a present? I have... I am present. Oh, I thought I'm... you said you were a present because you still have your Christmas tree up and it's already like June 17th. Congratulations. Well, the tree pickup doesn't actually come until the 11th, so I still that's got a, one. Whoa, that's that. a real tree? Yeah. Dude, it could light on fire at any moment. What are you doing? That's I Every single year, I say, let's get a fake tree. And then we don't have to deal with any of this shit. Well, that's why you just get on Amazon one day and just buy it. And when it shows up at the house, it's just there. A real tree, a real tree. There's so much better. I love going out and picking and picking out the tree and spending sixty dollars on something that's just going to die, and then we're going to throw Dude, it away. I saw the greatest thing ever online, and if I had space, I would do this. Somebody took their Christmas tree, left all the ornaments and everything on it, and just saran wrapped it and stuck it in the garage. And the next year they pull it, cut the saran wrap, and it's already done. That Wait. is the way to. That is the way to do it. That's, you got to have a good amount of space. Fuck you real trees. That is a that. hazard, and we need all the oxygen in the atmosphere that we can get. We shouldn't be not cutting down trees. Let's get the fake ones. You could literally I, I have an try. entire family of squirrels living in your tree right now. There could be a huh? squirrel orgy going on in your living room every night while you're sleeping. That's pretty messed up, man. <laughs> you think that's messed up? What do you What do you move the tree and you got to clean up that mess? <laughs> It's a, there's just squirrels and stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of, like, there's weird, like, little squirrel bondage going on in there. It's going to be real strange. Like a squirrel swing. It's like a swing sex bondage orgy party all in your tree. This is why you should get a fake tree. Never buy real trees, Ryan. Because if you I do, you get, from you get weird, people. you get squirrel gimps living in your living room. Well... I'll definitely set up a camera and see if I can catch anything. So you better make sure you get them to sign a consent form, Ryan. I don't know what the legal <laughs> squirrel age is, but you better make sure that. I'm sure there's a profit to be made somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm sh there's probably somebody who's into squirrel porn. I'll give you that. All right, whatever. What are we talking about? New episode. We got a big show for you guys. We got a lot of new. Well, we got some news. Pretty good news. We got a lot of Game of Thrones to talk about tonight, which is actually. Uh, I'm getting excited. This is the beauty of 2019. We have so many great things coming uh, this year that we could finally start talking about. Game of Thrones being one of them. We can April four months, a lot of lead in, and we're going to be real excited about it in this show. As, so, as the outside world burns and just and just falls apart around us, at least we can sit inside our houses and watch. Well, at it. least on the bright side, the government workers will have nothing better to do than what they get caught up on Game of Thrones. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, all joking aside, if you are a government worker right now who is not getting paid, or you're working at the TSA and you keep showing up to work. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, we'll get there, we promise. Someday. This one's for you. Yeah. But, uh, I'm very glad that as a, uh employee of the federal government that my agency is already paid for. That's so. true. I work in the private sector, so I'm good. But yeah, but we got a lot of cool stuff this year. Uh, like Ryan said, the world could be burning to the ground, and we have new Game of Thrones coming, so all is right in the universe. Um, if you want to know everything that you should be excited for this year, well, you should watch our episode from last week. It was a double-sized episode. I think the giant size of it, I think the girth of our episode really scared a lot of people. People just couldn't wrap their hands around yeah. how big and full of... Uh, of surprises, our last episode was? It was definitely a grower. Yeah, it was a shower yeah. and a grower. Yeah. I so. mean, that's how that's how we do it here. But, uh, but yeah, it was a pretty big episode. Uh, I, I The view counts were definitely down. I think people were scared away, like I said. But, uh, but it's a really good episode. You guys check it out. We went over all the things that we loved about, loved, hated, and were disappointed in in 2018 and some of the things we were excited about in 2019. But... Uh, Obviously, we'll be talking about a lot of things we're excited about over the upcoming year. Number one is Star Wars. 
I'm very excited for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of Star Wars this year, but more on that in a second. Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. So we got all that in the news. We got some uh, recommendations. We have uh, we have a new segment we're going to roll out. We've done it in the past. We just didn't have a name for it. So me and Ryan are kind of working with it. But uh, we decided that every week, since this is called the Geek Dad Report, we're going to try and start incorporating our kid stories into it weekly. We don't always do that. So uh, mm-hmm. it's a new segment we're going to call the Parent Trap, where we roll out our parent stories and talk about the joys. The, for all you the, non-viewers, the, all you listeners at home, those are air quotes, uh, the joys of parenthood in, uh, in the parent trap. So we got some parent trap stories, and uh, we actually have a topic this week. We gotta, we're going to talk about, kind of ties into the parent trap a little bit, but we're going to talk about the things this year that we are going to start introducing our kids to. So um, yeah, I have a story in the parent trap where I'm going to talk a little bit about Star Wars, so my daughter saw episode three for the very first time. And had her mind blown by a certain uh, revelation. But that got me thinking, well, you know what? What else am I going to try and get her mind blown with this year that she maybe doesn't know about? So uh, me and Ryan put together some stuff that we are going to let our kids see this year. And and we're going to talk about it. So that is what we got for you guys on the docket. Oh, and of course, as always, uh, the Faithful 50 from the Faithful 50. We got some good questions tonight. And uh, we actually are going to do something a little different. Instead of just reading questions, we also have some some fun. I put up. I tried to put up some fun stories and try and get your guys' thoughts on it. So tonight we're also going to read out some of your guys' comments on some of our best uh, our best stories. So hopefully that'll encourage everyone to throughout the week interact with us. I mean, some of you guys are really good and, and gals and everybody in between are really good at uh, interacting with us in general. But we're going to try and get more interactive in this new year and uh, to help you guys to feel satisfied with your time spent with us. We're gonna we're gonna give you shout outs and we're gonna read them on the air a lot more. So. We're going to give you all that internet fame that you desperately crave. Yeah. So, And let me tell you, the fame is glorious. Maybe it's just one or two people that watch you. But when they tell you how awesome you are all the time, it makes you feel really special. Almost yeah. fucking magical, even. That's just how we want everyone to feel. So. Yeah, right. My ego couldn't get any bigger anyway, so it's fine. All right. All right. What do we want to start out with? Do you want to start out with stories of the week? How was your week, Ryan? Or do you want to just dive right into the parent trap? Um, I, let's just uh, let's save the parent trap. We'll see how see how depressed we are after the news, baby. Or do you want to just dive? Or do you do you feel like you got to get some stuff off your chest? Well, I was just going to ask you how your week was. Usually we start out asking how our week was. We'll see where it goes. So, yeah, everybody, we came up with a new segment. We haven't figured out where to slide it in yet. So we'll uh, play with that a little bit. If you guys have an idea of where we should stick it, then you should just let us know. Yeah. We, we're we always looking for new, new places apps. to stick our segments. To stick our things. This episode is real sexual innuendo heavy. I'm not really sure why that's happening. Yeah, I think it's because of uh, the pre-show conversation. It that, could also be because we're recording on Wednesday, which is hump day. Yeah, it is hump day. Just saying. I mean, in general. Not like it's like specifically my hump day. It's just hump day. I'm missing out on my typical hump day uh, nightly festivity. So. All right, whatever. Let's get to the show. All right, how was your week, man? What's, what's going on? How was your weekend? Did you have a busy oh. week? Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to unload? Yeah. Any giant hot loads you want to dump all over the uh, internet? Do you? Well, if if you want to just start the parent trap, should we just roll it all into one? Let's just start with the whole. How was your weekend slash parent trap? You know what, Ryan? Lead what? away. Go I, ahead, parent I, trap. I, how was your parent trap? I think we two minutes it took us to figure out that we should just do parent trap right in the beginning. Ryan, how was your week? Did you have any parent trap stories you'd like to you'd like to share with the group? Well, not really. Uh... Uh, like a very specific story, but more just like a general. Ooh, do we have a parent trap like, ramp? We have a parent trap well, ramp. It's mostly that like my kids have just been super annoying lately, and then I'm you know just I'm stressed out from work. I'm stressed out from you know crap that's breaking at the house. I gotta you know figure out how to fix shit because oh my that's God, you know, it's the worst. That's just home ownership. And, you know, and then you fix one thing and then, you know, like the kids break off the fucking, they break off a doorknob, you know, because. Do you ever wonder too how they do it? Every time they explain how they did it, it sounds ludicrously stupid. Well, here's what happened. Like it got caught in my hair and I like slipped on a banana peel 
And our kids, my kids, are, I don't know. Oh, you just get the I don't know. Dude, I get the ridiculous cool. story about how it happened. Well, how? Well, how? How does this thing? You know, it, or like tonight? Like I said, hey, get that blanket off the footstool, and then you know somebody can sit on the footstool. So my son picked it. This is, and it's the dirty blanket. You know, it's the blanket that goes with the that the dog you know sits on. Mm-hmm. And he throws it on the nice brand new couch. My wife comes in, you know, 10 minutes later and says, who threw the fucking blanket on the couch? And this is the dog's blanket, not supposed to be on a nice couch. I said, I know Lincoln did. And he said, I, did, I, I don't know where I threw it. <laughs> like, you clearly picked it up and I watched you and you threw it. And you and I didn't see, like, where you threw it, but I just saw you chuck it. And then she's like, and so why did you do that? He's like, I don't know. It's like, you don't know anything. And they're just like fighting with each other all the and goddamn time. I'm just I'm stressed out. And they keep asking me like, why are you so grumpy lately? Like, I don't know, why do you keep fighting with your sister all the goddamn time? And I oh got this screaming up the age. And all of a sudden I hear a big thump and then I hear someone crying and and that's what happened again tonight. And I said and I shouted from downstairs because there's no way I'm going upstairs to find out, you know, why someone's crying. You know, and I said, it's, unless someone's bleeding and there's a bone sticking out, I don't want to hear any crap out of both of you. And nobody gets to come downstairs and, you know, ask for an ibuprofen or whatever because, you know, anytime they bump something, like, oh, I need an ibuprofen. Oh, God, like, my kids need a Band-Aid for everything. I need a Band-Aid. You're not even bleeding, but it'll make it feel better. Yeah. No, it won't. It's a fucking... You do not know, understand the concept of a Band-Aid. Yeah, my my new thing is, unless there's blood, I don't care. You're going to feel I, real bad. Then, I, when there's a then, compound you, fracture <laughs> that just hasn't completely broken the skin yet. I, I do realize a compound fracture is supposed to break the skin, but one of those ones that the bone's, like, sticking straight out, but it hasn't actually pierced the skin yet. You'd be yeah. like, where's the blood? No blood? I don't care. Yeah, they're just they're just constantly fighting with each other. And you know, like I at dinner tonight I watched my son walk walk past my daughter and she like grabbed him, like pinched him and like in the back and he you know, he turns and starts to shout fighting, you know, yelling at her and then she and I said, you know, what the hell? And I watched you do that. She's like, No, he did something first. Like he was walking past you. Dude. Do we have kids about the same age? They're, they're, they're totally in this best frenemies stage where they love each other most of the time. And then the other time they just torture each other endlessly. Yeah. And like people that we know that, you know, they have older kids like, Oh, you know, it's, they're so precious. And, you know, eventually when they get older, you know, they're not going to want to hang out with you anymore. And, you know, and so I'm like, I'm looking forward to that right now. Like I, I really Dude. just, Dude, I can't I, wait. You know, I can't I wait till my daughters don't want to say, talk hey, to me. Kids, and they just put on headphones little... and they write sad poetry for an hour every day yeah. when they come home. I just, just extra eyeliner. Yeah. As long as you stay away from the cure, <laughs> like, I don't know. You get a little crazy if you listen to too much cure. The cure. I'm looking forward to when I can just come home and just chill with my wife. and. Oh, good. That'll be in 25 years. Congratulations. Yeah. No, we, we, we realized that we have uh, 11 years until my youngest will be, because when she turns 18, I'm she, like, you're either going to college or you could join well, the military. You better hope the economy's better or else they'll be living with you till they're 35. 18, 27 is the new 18, Ryan. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, I, I love the little shitheads, but God, they're just, I'm just, I'm maxed out. Yeah, I just, I have zero patience for anything right now, and they just oh. keep asking me, "Why are you being so mean? Why are you Dude. being so grumpy?" Dude, like, I get what? that all the time. My kids are constantly like, they wherever they decide something needs to go, that's where it goes. Like, I'm literally finding underwear like on the couch, like dirty underwear. I'm like, why is there dirty underwear on this couch? Socks? There's socks in the bathroom, like on top of the toilet. I'm like, why are there dirty socks? I mean, everywhere I go, it's just dirty socks. Blankets everywhere, clothes everywhere, books everywhere. And then my favorite part is, is they don't pick them up, but then they start yelling at me when they can't find it. What'd you do with my book? I didn't do anything with your book. Where'd you leave it? I don't know. <laughs> well, why you? My, and my other thing is that, uh, you know, we have this dog that the kids are supposed to be doing 
you know, like training and picking oh, yeah, up. No, the dog will never. If you bought a dog thinking it was going to be good for the kids, no, that's your no. dog. And you know they they ignore him. You know, like ninety percent of the time. You know, because they want to watch TV. They don't want to, you know, entertain the dog or do anything like that. So I'm, I'm at the point where I said, if you guys don't start doing anything, I'm taking him back to the rescue. And I'm going to find a, tell him to find a real family that actually gives a crap about him. Because I'm sick and tired of being the only one. My wife and I are the only people that has to do 99% of the stuff for the dog. And they don't do crap. And that's been pissing me off lately. And he's sitting right here, by the way. So he hears. I should everything. feel better. You get that off your chest. <sighs> what about you, Brian? How that's... was your? Oh, I know you had good. a. I know you had a very. Uh, yeah, I had, a... I had a real interesting weekend. So uh, for my parrot trap story this week, I uh, so my our power went out on Saturday, late Saturday night, about one. Well, I guess technically early Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Um, my daughter comes running into my room. I'm scared. Now, my oldest is kind of a, everything scares her. So I'm like, whatever, go back to sleep. And so I take her, take her back to her bed, put her in bed. And she's like, it's just, it's just so much wind. And I'm like, ah, it's not windy. And I'm listening. I'm like, oh, it's kind of windy. And we had, a, we had a like surprise windstorm that came through 50, 60 mile an hour gusts, sustained gusts for a while. Yeah. So I'm like, that is kind of loud. And then all of a sudden, 50, I put her to bed. 15 minutes later, she comes running in again. She's like, Dad, the power's out. The power's out. And the roof's going to blow off. I'm like, oh, God. The roof's not going to blow off. And I stand up, and I'm like, oh, shit. It, it sounds like the roof's going to blow off. And I'm like, yeah. wow, it's, like, blowing hard. And so I'm, you know, I'm being the tough guy. So I give her a flashlight. I'm like, here's a flashlight. Let's go back to bed. I'm sure the power will be back on. As I'm walking to her bed, it starts sounding like freaking bombs over Baghdad. And I'm like, what is that noise? I look, I, I look out, and you can see flashes. Transformers are blowing like popcorn. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, oh shit, the pow- power's gonna be out for. Shut up, dog. What? I'm recording a show. Speaking of the devil. What? Yeah. Smack him. Book before eight thirty. Go find something to do. Go read your book upstairs. And wow, right on time, right, right on yeah. cue. This is the the perfect segment to, for the child to come yeah. in. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah, I love you too, Charlie. <laughs> there you go. Are you talking about me? I swear to God, they have they're psychic. They're psychic demon children are you talking about me can i can i yeah. do something hey, are you talking dad can i get on the podcast you sound real angry i gotta just tell my side of the story so I uh i like to sit in front of my computer yeah for no reason just and just because and just to it <laughs> so um so the transformers are blowing i'm like man we're gonna be without power for a while so we wake up next morning and sure shit no power no word on when it's going to be. And because the power's out in the entire area like all the cell phone tower power is out too so there's no cell phone internet there's nothing, right? No lights, no nothing. No cell phone internet? Oh, no. Man. Yeah, it was that, weird. It was a weird, it was a weird Sunday. Just, people were just probably just like blowing Dude, I'm breath. telling you, yeah. a day is really long when you have nothing to do. I did not realize how much, how long a day could be when you have nothing to do. So I got a generator, right? So my power, my, my thing number one is I get some power to the fridge and some heat back on in this place. Um, and so I pull out my generator because my house is wired for generator and I went to put it in and I realized, oh, wait. My, uh, I need an adapter. I don't have the right plug-in, which is I should have checked before, but I didn't. So I'm like, shit, all right. So I called my father-in-law. He doesn't have one. So we got to go to Home Depot uh, in the next town over because the Home Depot in our town is out of power. So we get over. And so we're like, well, we're starving. We need coffee because, you know, we can't open the fridge because you don't want to let the cold air out until you get some, you know, juice going to it. And so we're like, oh, we need coffee. And so we, we find a, the nearest Starbucks. Well, literally everybody in, you know, in our town is is going somewhere else. So the lines are just super long. Me and the wife were a little hungover because it was the Seahawks game. We got a little wasty pants once they lost. And uh, so we're a little hungover. We're in the car. We got no power. And we're in this long line. And the kids are like, why is this line so long? Why aren't we moving? Do you really need coffee? Why do adults drink coffee? This is dumb. Can we get out of line? What are we doing? And finally, I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> And then we get into the line, and then my daughters, like, will stick their head out the window, and they start trying to order, like, yeah, can I get a hot chocolate and, like, a scone? I'm like, shut the fuck up. You ain't getting shit. 
Yeah. Two coffees. Yeah. You <laughs> but get, we're hungry. You shut You're not the hell anything. up, drink. Yeah, so, you know, so we get the cord. We, you know, we eventually get all the stuff together. We get back to the house. You know, I get the generator going. And then my hot water tank starts leaking. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, it was that kind of, it was that kind of night. But, um, you know, the kids got iPads and stuff. And so we let them play their iPads. But then, of course, you know, the first hour, all they do is complain that they can't. Oh, my internet's not working. My movies aren't downloaded. Yes, we don't have internet. Well, how come the iPad works then? Because it's on battery power. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, we get, we get through all that, and we, uh, we start playing it. Once we all settled down and realized we had nothing to do but, we, but figure out something to do together, we, uh, we started pulling out some art projects. I finally started working on that Stormtrooper helmet that uh, I've been talking about doing for years. I got for Christmas like three years ago. And then... Uh, and then uh, I charged my MacBook up because I happened to have a, a drive. I have a DVD drive because we wanted to watch a family movie, but we didn't have anything to watch a family movie on. And I'm like, oh, you know, I got like a DVD drive for my MacBook. So I, but the MacBook was dead. So I charged it up with the generator. Um, dude, yeah, I'm telling you, it's the process. And when you're charging your MacBook on a generator, it takes forever. So it took like six hours to charge my MacBook. So I plug it in, it's charging, whatever. We start playing games. Well, it's also really dark out here, so and it's Seattle, so it's that kind of gloomy dark. So you couldn't it wasn't even bright enough to like read a book or anything. So we have all these so we have these little LED lanterns that we use for camping. So we put those on the yeah. coffee table and we're playing games. We start playing games, we order pizza. It's kind of creepy because there's no lights anywhere. And so I don't know how the pizza person even found us, but uh yeah. so, you know, we, made, we kinda made it fun. We ordered pizza, we're playing games by the lantern. And then, uh, and then finally my MacBook's charged. I get the DVD. Well, I get the, the disk drive. And I realize it's not. We pick out a, some movie we want to watch. And I plug it in. I realize it's a DVD drive. It's, it's not a Blu-ray drive. <laughs> so Ooh, we have to start scouring the ancient archives to find some DVDs. And so, you know, we found... Dust off, dust off like this thing that's got a couple inches of dust on it. Like... Yeah, pretty <sighs> much. Pr- dude, pretty much. It's like, I felt like Indiana Jones. I was like an archaeologist. <sighs> And so we're, uh, so I started pulling, I found all my old Star Wars DVDs and I realized that nobody, everybody had seen all the Star Wars movie except for episode three, Revenge of the Sith. So that was the, uh, that was the one they hadn't seen. So I was like, well, watch this. let's watch this. You guys haven't seen this. So they're like, yeah, let's watch it. And so we put it in and it was great because, you know, lights are out. We're all huddling around my 13 inch map book watching Revenge of the Sith. And everybody's actually really enjoying it because it's, it's the best of the prequels. And it's funny because Addison has watched them all, but she had not put it together yet that Anakin Skywalker was Darth Vader. And so when he makes the turn, she just, stop, stop the movie. Stop. Oh my God. <laughs> Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. Anakin Skywalker is Luke Skywalker's father. And I'm like, I don't know how you put that together, but yes. <laughs> After realizing that. <laughs> Yo, dude, her mind was blown. I'm dying. She was just in utter shock. And then she gets to the point yeah. where he gets his arms and legs chopped off and lit on fire. And she's like, because right before they're fighting, she goes, wait a minute. I thought he was all like injured in a suit. And I'm like, yeah, just keep watching. And so yeah. we start, so we're watching it and, you know, and he gets lit on fire and they're like, oh, that's harsh. And Charlie goes, oh my God, his balls burnt off. <laughs> I go, what? She goes, oh, yeah, his balls are lit on fire. I'm like, his body's on fire. Yeah, his balls are on his body. My six-year-old. I'm like, yes, his balls are on his fu- uh, body. Well, then they're on fire. He got his balls burnt off. She goes, Darth Vader has burnt off balls. And I'm like, yes, I guess technically I Darth Vader probably has burnt off balls. I have no idea what you're going to do with that one, Brian. Burnt <laughs> off balls, Ryan. Or, that was that was her first reaction was that, that was charlie's that was her big take out of this wasn't like ooh, he's darth vader it was like oh darth vader got his balls burnt off man i wonder what happens when your balls get put in lava i know and then that made me think like i never thought about that i'm like oh no wonder he's so mad all the time it's terrible it's awful it's even worse but <laughs> Next uh, time you get mad just say oh my balls are so hot right now <laughs> yeah oh god so you know, so Addison, I kind of talked to her about Star Wars, and it was crazy. And, like, she wants to watch them all over again now because now she's got this revelation. It's like the whole, you know, it's like she's finally reached that age where she's starting to understand it. And it all kind of clicked into place a little bit. Like, oh, this is why it's so important about Luke and Vader and all, you know, all these things. And and uh, and so today or yesterday, I asked him again. I was like, so I asked her, so like, so is your mind still blown? I want to talk to her about Star Wars a little bit more. Your mind still blown about Star Wars? And she goes, yeah, I can't believe he's Darth Vader. And all of a sudden, Chuck goes, with burnt balls. <laughs> I'm just like, God damn it, Charlie. You're the worst. She won't let it go. 
<laughs> so every time we talk about Darth Vader, all she talks about is his burnt balls. I'm like, oh, God. Extra crispy. I'm raising my children right. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah. So luckily we got, but anyway, we went to bed. So you're raising at least one right. <laughs> yeah, God, I'm doing something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so we're, uh, we got power back on late Sunday night. Sorry, I'm pouring my drink here, so I'll get a little dry mouth. Uh, we got our we got our power back on late Sunday night, and things are kind of back to normal. My father-in-law came over and fixed my, my hot water tank because he's the man. Every, everybody plugged in all their devices. <laughs> oh, yeah, everyone's like in heaven. It's like they have a new appreciation for anything electronic. <laughs> but anyway, so that was my weekend. That was my parent corner. Uh, that does lead us to a topic of the night. We're gonna we're gonna do the news and then we'll talk about the topic afterwards. But um, just kind of a, a little little teaser for you guys. Um, it made us start thinking about made me start thinking about. And I kind of brought up to Ryan about you know with the mind blowing revelation of Darth Vader is uh, was Anakin Skywalker. Um, that's the movie I went to show him last because it is the darkest and it definitely has the most death and violence and stuff. And um, but it kind of got us thinking about like, hey, you know, our kids are getting older. What things are we going to maybe this year show them that we've been holding off because they were a little darker, a little more violent? Um, and so what, we're gonna have a talk, we're gonna have a little conversation later about uh, the things that we're gonna let our kids watch this year. Yeah. Game of Thrones. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> definitely not Game of Thrones. Predator That's- Two. Basic Instinct. <laughs> Dude, Chuck would watch that and like take notes. Like, yeah, you're. Right. She would watch Basic Instinct just for the one scene. Oh, ice pick. Dad, can I get an ice pick? No, you can't get an ice pick, Charlie. Oh, Dad, she showed her vagina. Yes, Charlie, she showed her vagina. All sharp objects away from that one. Yeah, no shit. And just for the record, in case anybody uh, is listening, I'm not going to let my kids watch Basic Instinct, in case you were wondering. All right. Yeah. But that leads us to time to start Ninja News, because we ran a little bit long with Parent Trap. Yeah. You, That's fine. Because you whine like a baby for 10 minutes, Ryan. God, it, it's been a while since we got some parent That's trap. Well, we don't really have a ton of news either, so we can kind of blow through it. Uh, but yeah. all right. Hey, Ryan, guess what time it is? It is time huah, for the judo chop of information. Boom. The uppercut of knowledge. And then we finish it off with the Cobra Kai leg sweep of learning. Boom. And that that is how... You kick some serious ass people. Yeah. And then you tell people, and then you immediately tell them what happened in the news. Exactly. First up, everybody, Star Wars news. We got a couple Star Wars uh, things for you. Some good and some bad. Mm -hmm. Actually, in my opinion, it's all kind of bad, I think. I don't really know. But it's Star Wars news, so that's what we're starting with. It, it, it's not Ninja News unless we start off with Star Wars. So. That's a good point. All right, first story. Today we found out that Star Wars Resistance is going to be renewed for a second season. Uh, Disney XD launched a trailer that shows much more of the First Order. Um, they're going to be tying uh, the series directly into the events of The Force Awakens. Um, that being said, I have quit watching the show because it's so terrible. So I'm not really all that excited. I mean, whatever, I guess. I'd like you, anybody who's currently watching it to let me know if it had gotten any better. I, I made it through episode five, and I just could not stomach it anymore. It was so terrible. Uh, so. I, my son and I talked about trying to start it, and then we just find something else to do. Yeah, so let me know if it's worth getting back into. Um, it's definitely kind of cool. They're tying a lot of the First Order stuff into it, which, I don't know, might get me back into it if it starts <clears throat> taking more of that approach. But I just, ugh, God, it. It took way too long to find its footing. And I don't mind a show hit and miss, but when it's just like you are counting down the minutes till your 20, you know, your 18 minute episode is over, that's just, that's not good. There's way too much good animation for that. Yeah, if you start looking at your watch to see what time it is, then you know you're not. Dude, it was bad. It's real bad. Um, and then uh, our other Star Wars news is that uh, Disneyland apparently has, has, has hiked up ticket prices. Before this year, they've already. Well, hang on a second. What, Chuck? What are you doing? I mean, I you should have done that a long time ago. Upstairs. I love you. I forgot. Yeah, you always forget. Get upstairs. Bedtime. I love you too, Charlie. Go. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Disneyland, because Star Wars Land is opening this year and because they like all the money, has hiked up ticket prices. They've gone up, I believe, as much as like thirty or forty dollars a ticket for the for the value tickets, and if yeah. you get into the premium tickets, it's even more than that. 
Well, I mean, they did have to make a significant investment into uh, the parks one and all that, but I mean, Disney's sitting on billions in cash or something, aren't they? Well, they, there's a couple of reasons they did this. Apparently, they've done it because, well, two reasons. One, they like you said, they want to cover their investment that they've put into the park. And two, it's becoming very popular and it's becoming super crowded. <clears throat> Um, by charging more, they actually want to drive down how many people go on a daily basis. They still want people to go, but they want to become more of an event than like a just full to capacity every single day type thing. Yeah, I mean, I I can understand that point. If they're just if they're trying to drive down people. I mean, well, but I mean, they're, they're not like trying to drive everyone out of the park. I mean, it's not like the prices well, were a hundred bucks and another five hundred dollars. Like you know, the rich people can afford to, you know, go to the the parks, but well, they definitely signif- they significantly raised the uh, the annual pass by like three or, f- or five hundred bucks or something like that. It's, you know, I know we're not giving specific information here, but they raised it quite a bit, and I, like I said, it was because they want to pay for things, and also they want to get less people in the park. I'm telling you, last time I went, I could not believe how many people were there. It was crazy, and uh, yeah. you know. They'd even talk. I was talking to some people at the park that they had talked about possibly actually get selling out a certain amount of tickets, and then after that, it's like, sorry, we're at our capacity today. We're not selling any more tickets. Um, you know, so I don't know. I mean, my guess is, like you said, this is as much to cover their investment as anything. I don't care. I'm still going. It cost me for family of four. It's twelve hundred bucks for park hopper tickets for three days. I just when I go to Disneyland, I just put. I just know it's going to cost a lot if it's a couple hundred bucks more at this point. Whatever it is, what it is. And you'll get to do all the cool Star Wars stuff. Yeah. I mean, listen, it sucks. But as somebody who doesn't live in California, I don't go all the time. Whatever. I expect I expect it to be expensive, so I just don't even care at this point. Yeah. It's always just bring extra cash. Just know, um, just know it costs a lot of money. It's a, you know, it's a fun. It's a fun thing, place to go. So, anyway, there you go. Uh, all right, what do you want to do next? We want to cover some hodgepodge. We want to jump into the uh, the Game of Thrones news. We got Game of Thrones news. Let's let's do Game of Thrones. All right, so first Game of Thrones news I want to talk about is uh, it's actually kind of HBO news. They released a, uh, a a quick I don't know what you call it. It's a trailer, but it's a it's like a cut of all their upcoming shows. Uh, we got 10, 15 seconds of all their most popular shows. True Detective. We got a first which, look at Watchmen, which is pretty cool. Um, we have to see the new Rorschach. We have to see a few of the characters in action. Looks pretty good. Definitely looks like Watchmen. Um, so I'm mm. excited about that. Um, we got to look at Veep and Secret Lies or Big Lies or whatever. But the one that really got people talking was we got a 15 second look at what I'm guessing is the very first episode of uh, season eight of Game of Thrones. And it wasn't much, but hey, we got to see Daenerys meet Sansa for the first time and. Welcome to Winterfell. The castle is yours. Yeah, the Winterfell is yours. Uh, your majesty, or whatever the hell, yeah. your face or something. But oh, uh, I don't know about you, but that's literally all I needed. I'm just like, yes, Game of Thrones yeah. is back. You're it all was. gonna die. I mean, Terrible. I didn't deaths. Need to see like a teaser, like a you know, like the the opening teaser thing that they do. Yeah. I don't need yeah. anything. To be honest with you, I don't need anything. I, I saw the 15 seconds. I like it because it gave away nothing. We already knew they were heading north. We already knew that Sansa would probably meet Daenerys. And it just reminded you how awesome the show is. And yeah. I can't wait for it. And, and we know that it's going to be like watching a bunch of movies. Yeah. So apparently the HBO exec, I guess it you know it pays to be the king, uh, of the executive of the uh, of the, sh- the channel has gotten to watch all six episodes, and he said that every episode is like a mini movie. He says yeah. it's like watching six movies. Uh, and he said that even though the the ones that he watched, they haven't had the CGI, yeah, uh, and yet, but he said it's it's still. I mean, obviously, he's going to be you know well, pimping his yeah. brand. He's not going to but... come out and be like, "Listen, this new Game of Thrones season blows. You guys are going to hate it." <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I quit. Yeah, we canceled it, and we made we just canceled. It. We're gonna end on a cliffhanger. Yeah, <laughs> you should check and out Watchmen it. though. It's gonna be Watch really good. With his aunt on that boat. Oh god! And it ends the end. That would be hilarious. That's the way the books end. It just ends <laughs> with him on a boat yeah. heading heading to the final battle. You just don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it looks cool. I mean, that that kind of vibes what we heard. We'd heard that every single one of these is gonna be a feature length. Uh, you know 
movie <laughs> ep- t- runtime, you know, 80 to, I think 80 is what you have to have to qualify as a feature. So apparently the, the shortest one is not going to be any less than 80 minutes. Mm. So. I'm, I'm a hundred percent with that. I've heard rumors that the finale could be a two hour, <laughs> two hour movie, which would be I'll awesome. I'll watch it. I, whatever. I mean, if it's eight hours, I'll wa- we will all watch them. If it's eight, six do, episodes, yeah. eight hours long each, we'll just dedicate our entire Sundays to watching them. No, yeah, I'll watch four hours. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to see it. Yeah, and, just... and uh, do not worry. We will do our Game of Thrones episodes after uh, after each episode. We will break them down and talk all about it. That will be coming back in April. So, um, yeah. Also along the lines, HBO also announced that uh, – I'm trying to find it here. They announced the full cast of the prequel series that is – moving forward where did it go but i don't think they said who they're going to be playing they have not no they, they announced the cast they did not announce their characters yet that is true yes and i'm looking for it stall ryan do something funny it is going to be leonardo dicaprio no and all right i found it you don't have to stall anymore yeah. you're stalling you need to work on your stall tactics pretty bad well i didn't know how long i needed to start leonardo dicaprio oh god all right so first up we have naomi watts how's that Ooh. for you she's a good actress yes she is and then we got a bunch of other people i don't know so here we go we got josh whitehouse he's known for modern life is rubbish and the receptionist both never heard of uh <laughs> ivano jeremiah known for humans a black mirror episode and a black mirror episode mm-hmm Oh, I know this girl. The Chronicles of Narnia. She's the girl who played Lucy. Georgie Henley is in this. Oh, wow. Look at that. Knew that person. Uh, Jamie Campbell, Power, and Toby Regbo. Apparently they, oh, they played uh, the young Grindelwald and young Dumbledore in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, I haven't seen that one yet, but. It's pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Naomi Aki. Played in Lady Macbeth, and she's going to be appearing in Star Wars Episode Nine. So clearly, mm-hmm. she's a great actress because anybody in that movie is amazing. I'm glad uh, all, all these British actors are finally getting some work because yeah, I, I know, know you know, fuck, yeah. pretty much it's a British invasion in in America. Like everybody's British. That's like when you when you hear someone do an interview and you're like, that guy's been British this whole time. Did you know Christian or, Bale was British? Who knew? Like in a British accent. Did you know Christian Bale's British? Yeah. I didn't like uh who was it? I can't remember. Henry Cavill, maybe? I but... knew Henry Cavill was British. Uh the um the first time I heard Rick Grimes talk, he's Australian. I did not know he was Australian for a long time. <laughs> so occasionally you'll hear somebody like, Oh, they're Australian. Like what? You're like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, uh, and that's pretty much all the Game of Thrones news we got for you guys. So needless to say, we're pretty excited. Uh, I'm excited for the prequel. I think it's going to be different enough that it'll be pretty cool, but, I mean, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. I won't be watching any more trailers. I'm good. I don't want to ruin anything. Yeah, I mean, who cares? As long as the intro goes, yeah in your mind you're already seeing all the buildings like coming up it's right mm-hmm. it's pretty great all right uh moving on from uh multiple fantasy universes to yet another fantasy universe star trek has yeah. been canceled congratulations everybody none of you saw star trek beyond and now star trek 4 has been thrown in the garbage like a big piece of trash well i don't think they they put it on a shelf very lovingly <laughs> Star Trek, they, the director, I think it's Jay Salvatore, I think he's doing it? I don't know. They, they wrote down a note and it says, I owe you. Well, the, there's been rumors coming for a long time that the two main leads for Star Trek Four were supposed to be, obviously, Chris Pine and Chris Helmsworth was going to come back as his father. Um, they were having serious contract issues and they were not sure if they're going to be able to work something out. Um, they are still fighting with those actors over this and apparently the director decided to pack up his shit and get out because he was tired of it. So Paramount has officially shelved Star Trek for, for the time being does not mean we will not see it, but my guess is, is that they're probably going to stop these with that, the last cast and probably just reboot the whole thing. Again. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if they just 
Or even if they just stuck to um, developing on the TV shows. Well, that we'll see. That's the thing. Is Star Trek technically the rights are in two different places? Paramount owned the movie rights, and CBS owns the film rights, mm. or sorry, the TV rights. So Star Trek Paramount is interested oh, in making them. movies. They could, get, <laughs> yeah, they could care less about the TV show. Oh, okay. And CBS is like, hey, that's why they're making 32 Star Trek shows because they don't give a shit about the movies. So. I don't know. I really enjoyed the Chris Pine movies, the Star Trek movies. I, I think if they're not going to go with that cast, I would like to see them maybe go in a different direction. Maybe the next generation or, um, you know, the next next generation do something kind of different. But but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. if They're going to do something different like the TV show is, Ryan. Because apparently we got the new uh, Jean-Luc Picard show coming out. And rumors are that Jean-Luc Picard's life is going to be radically different Ooh. since the – uh, since so, when, when's the last time we saw him? Uh, when he had the young clone of himself, right? And the Romulans yeah, joined the Federation. Yeah, and uh, cr- they, they had to crash it into something. Yeah, and then I think they joined the Federation and Data died. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a while. Data All I know died. is Tom Hardy was young Jean-Luc Picard. Which one was it? Was that first? No, not first time. It was um, Generations Nemesis. Generations was the first. And then First Contact, and then whatever the one was with... I think it was Nemesis. Yes, it was Nemesis. Yeah. So, um, God, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah, but... so, so we thought it'd be fun. I, I posted, like, what do you guys think he's going to be doing since his life is going to be radically different? I said he's going to be a hairdresser. Yeah. And I said he's going to be sitting in a room that's got four lights in it and shouting at him. There you go. Uh, our good friend Dale from the Faithful Fifty said that he's going to be living in a cabin by himself with a bunch of cats named Wesley. Yes, I I very, I, I very much enjoyed that one. Yeah. Dale, you definitely win on that one because there's nothing that I want to see now more than Captain Picard got a, a cat named Wesley. Yeah, that, that made me laugh a lot. Uh, Chris. Chris, good Chris, but we're, we've changed his name to Boring Chris because he doesn't like Solo because he's a jerk face. Uh, he thinks that he's going to become Star Trek version of Bruce Jenner. So I guess he means John Luke Picard will become Gene Picard? Yeah. All right. All Fair enough. That somehow he looks exactly the same. I think uh, I think he'd look pretty sexy in a dress if, you, if, you, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Patrick Stewart is a fine man, or a fine lady, whichever one he chooses to be. Uh, and then finally, uh, Jesse says he thinks that Jean-Luc Picard will be in a fancy electric wheelchair hanging out with a hairy mutant with claws. Hmm. It's a little I on think, the nose. I wonder if he means something specific. I, yeah, I I don't know if he's trying to like cross over something. Or he's crossing what? streams. Don't cross streams if you've not seen the original Ghostbusters. Yeah, don't cross the streams. Well, uh, speaking of galactic-type star things, apparently a uh, Silver Surfer movie may be in the works and may be coming sooner than we had thought. Uh, Adam McKay, director Adam McKay, who did most recently did Vice, but uh, has, has been known for Anchorman and Step Brothers, wants to do a Silver Surfer movie, and him and Kevin Feige have had serious discussions about a Silver Surfer movie. I want to know what unserious discussion of like all I'm what? saying is Will Ferrell better be Galactus. Why Will Ferrell of all people? Because I because Galactus is very tall. Mm-hmm. And I feel like anybody who eats people's planets would have a sense of humor. And Galactus has purple underwear, so I can see Will Ferrell Ferrell eating planets like as a snack in his underwear with a helmet on. And John I, C. Riley can be the Silver Surfer. Yeah, and then the movie automatically gets a zero percent. No, yeah. no, because this is actually like a shoehorn. This is actually we all wanted to know what happened to the Step Brothers. Well, now we found out. One of them became Galactus, and the other became the Silver Surfer, and now they're cruising through the galaxy. No, I do not like this idea. Step right. Brothers to the Silver Surfer. I'm telling you. Put it on your calendar. You want to watch this movie, Ryan. <laughs> They're a house of learned galactic conquerors. I do not agree with this. No. Yes. No. Yes. Mm. 
Brian, they have, I they have giant I, I, bunk beds. I don't think I think that the Will Ferrell and um, okay, I'm not gonna say just pulls it. out his balls and rubs them all over the Silver Surfer's surfboard. Yeah. And then falling some some lava, and he's got burnt balls. Oh, burnt balls! Uh, <laughs> poor Vader. God, hey, goddamn Charlie. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. Our story of Step Brothers Two may or may not be happening, but uh, Adam McKay apparently does want to direct the Silver Surfer movie. So there's that. Uh, what other Marvel news we have? Uh, Captain Marvel tickets are on sale now. So if you're excited for that, get them mm-hmm. now. I will be going. I probably won't pre-order my tickets. With Fandango, you can just literally get them the day of now, so that's nice. But uh, if you want to go opening you night, Captain Marvel. Go to the first one and not take any of the women in your life. Yeah, right. Do I want it? Do I want to have burnt balls, Ryan? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, there's also a new TV spot that they Marvel released. I've uh, been completely avoiding all of these because I'm going to go see the movie anyway, so what's the point? Yeah. Why, why ruin it? That's all I don't know. Speaking of what's the point, Venom 2 is officially happening. Yeah, that's the... You know, I still have zero desire to watch it. It's so stupid. Uh, the enti- Here's the worst part about the whole thing, is the original cast is coming back, which I liked, but also the original writer, which I'm not so thrilled about because that script was garbage. So... You know, maybe bring in a new screenwriter, new director. I like the cast. The cast was good. Yeah, but you, you told me there's a super amazing liner that they got in it for Carnage. Oh, God. Yeah, Woody Harrelson is coming back. Oh, God. Hopefully Woody Harrelson's wig is coming back because that was hilarious. Maybe they'll just dye his hair. <laughs> he, has, he has no hair, man. He's Woody Harrelson. Get some Kool-Aid and... Uh, and I would like to, in, in the, you know, I've been reading comments, so I'd like to read a, another comment. Uh, let's see, where is, oh, wait a minute, sorry, that wasn't a comment, that was a question from Chris. We're going to get to Chris's stupid question in a little bit. Look yes. Jerk face. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, Avengers, speaking of trailers, uh, Avengers Endgame, the marketing team has said that they will only show the first 15 minutes of worth of footage. Well, not 15 oh. minutes of footage, but all the footage we see of the promotional will only be within the first 15 minutes. So, Jeff, this is for you, man. Yes, you can You can do it, Jeff. You can watch Endgame and not be ruined. No, I don't understand why like big movies don't start this approach. Yeah, I, no, I agree 100%. I mean... Is how many movies have we seen now that's been just completely spoiled? Well, like, you know? for instance, I watched, I stay completely stayed away from that eight minute Aquaman trailer. I watched the first trailer and a couple TV spots, and I was, I knew almost nothing about the movie and was completely surprised by a ton of the parts. Um, you know, I watched some of the trailers after the fact, and some of the best parts of the movie were shown in the trailers, and I'm so glad I didn't watch them because the movie was great. And it was so much fun just to be excited by watching it. Mm hmm. So, you know, whatever. So. Oh. Anyway, good Glad on you, Marvel. Thank you, because a lot of your Marvel movies tend to show a lot of the movie. I'm kind of excited you're only showing a little bit of it. Maybe Marvel will just start doing this for all their movies, and they won't ruin a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, all right. Speaking of things that are ruined, Vikings is coming to an end. No. Yep, season six. That will be, I think, the, I think we're getting the second half of season five right now. Yeah, we're in the second half. So we're getting season six this later this year, and that will be the end of Vikings. Um, apparently, they're going to do a spinoff. Uh, no word on what the spinoff could or could not be. I'm still a few episodes behind, so I, I'm guessing this show feels like they're going to start knocking off some of the cast, main cast. We'll see uh, who's left standing at the end of this. But uh, for a spinoff, what would you like to see for a spinoff? Uh, you know, I want to see Bjorn become – because if you read – like the Wikipedia and yeah, stuff on Bjorn Pregnant. the Ironhide. He was un, you couldn't pierce his hide <laughs> with a sword. Yeah, well, like eventually, like according to you know the the Bjorn, the son of Ragnar becomes like the king of all of Finland. Well, here's the thing about these guys: is a lot of this is loosely based. There's very little written history, so this yeah, is all kind I, of. I'd like to see like could they? I mean, they do. Well, they haven't lately, but when in the beginning they did kind of tie in like a lot of like the legends and stuff like that about Ragnar and his sons, and and so I would like to I would want to see just Bjorn just taking over everything. 
That's what I want to say. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really sure. I'd almost like to see him maybe go to a different part of Europe. And see the impacts of the Vikings and kind of kind of give oh, us a see, different like, the Vikings that are like the Germanic Vikings, or maybe give us the French version of events. We've seen a lot what's happening with the English and the. Uh... Well, you can see what Rollo's been doing. And, yeah, that's you know. what I mean. Like maybe give us some different. We've seen a lot of what's happening in England and you know the Netherlands, but it'd be kind of cool to see the Vikings effect on other countries this period. Well, and... The. So, Rollo it, it says that Rollo's grandson is William the Conqueror, the oh, one that was able to be the one that united all of England. Or maybe maybe they just, you know, we still have another season. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I do feel like this show's kind of ran its course. I don't think it's ending too early. I feel like we've gotten I – feel, I feel like we've gotten the right amount of Vikings. I feel like this story <laughs> from Ragnar all the way through his sons – um, obviously we're not there yet, but I think it's, it's, you, you feel the finishing line coming, right? You feel like, yeah. okay, this story is running its course. Well, and, and it seemed, and they're doing it in a good way. So De- it, well, it's, definitely. Not like a lot of, it's not like a lot of shows where you just like walking dead. We're like, Oh my God, they're just dragging this. Yeah. I would rather see a really yeah. good six season show than a way too drawn out 10 season show. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, honestly, maybe they do a time jump. I think a time jump would be a good way to do it, too. Give us 50 years after the fallout of whatever the end of Season 6 is, and then we you know, we kind of jump forward that way. But, but anyway, let us know what you guys think. Uh, what do you feel about Vikings being canceled, and what would you like to see? Uh, mm. Let's see here. And then we had the Golden Globes. I don't give a shit about the Golden Globes. Do you even want to talk about them at all? I don't care at all. I will... It's- I will say that a uh, quick shout out Spider Man into the Spider Verse did get a golden glo- a golden globe for best animated movie so it looks chances are strong it's going to win an Oscar in the same category so we may get an Oscar Spider Man Oscar finally yeah but isn't like every animated one is just like six different Disney movies yeah but did Disney release an animated one this year now, does anybody else even make animated movies other than Disney ones? DreamWorks. They release uh, How to Train Your Dragon once every six years. Uh, that's true. I didn't think about that one. I uh, thought uh, everyone was owned by Disney now. So. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I don't yeah. give a shit about the Oscars. A lot of people were upset because movies won that they didn't think was going to win. Uh, the only mm. thing I will give a shout out to is Christian Bale won, uh, I believe, Best Actor in a Comedy for Vice. And he gave a shout out to Satan for... Uh, for Dick Cheney? Yeah, for his inspiration. For his inspiration? That's amazing. I, 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 I'm I, just going to end it on that note. Way to go, Christian Bale. Uh, that Christian makes Bale, me... we salute you. So. Batman is the best. Yeah. Uh, and let me think. I think that's all the news we got. Uh, Aquaman's set to hit a billion dollars this week, so if you haven't seen it, go see that. It's a great movie. Also, go see Bumblebee. Bumblebee's doing really good internationally. It's going to clear... Looks like it's going to clear four or five hundred million dollars before it runs over, which is good. Not too shabby. No, and, and you know, honestly, most of the time I don't really care that much about box office. The only reason why I mention it is because if a movie, if I want to see more of movies like Bumblebee, I want the studio to get the right impression and not give us more of the crappy Michael Bay ones. I want more like this movie. And the only yeah. way that happens is if they look at it and be like, oh, this one made money. Let's make more of them. Yeah, it's got to make money. So, money, money, money. Go see Bumblebee. Great movie. Really enjoyed the hell out of it. And yeah. that, everybody, is all the news. That is fit for me to regurgitate on the internet. Woohoo! All right, so uh, we ran long in our parent trap, so we will not spend as much time talking about our topic of the night. But uh, but real quick, spend five minutes talking about this. We did want to talk about what the things that we are going to let our kids watch. So piggybacked off of, uh, like I said, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Got me thinking, like, hey, this is the year my kids are a little bit older. They're a little bit ready for more, a little more mature themes. And uh, what what do I want to show them that I haven't had a chance to? So first, number one on my list was uh, the rest of the Indiana Jones movies. Oh, uh, you know, uh, my wife, she, uh, we were sitting down here. And we, we do family movie night every Friday. And, and last Friday, she was like, hey, we have the Indiana Jones movies, right? And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah. She's like, how about we let the kids watch one of those? And it just... I had to like stop and like blink and like make sure that I was still like in my house and that I hadn't like gone to like someone else's house. Or I wasn't like in a crazy place. And uh, she's like, well, which one do you think they could watch? I'm like, 
Well, one's got Nazis with their faces melting off at the yeah, end. Yeah, the only you ones... You can close your eyes for that. Yeah, the only ones my kids have seen is the Crystal Skull. We did watch that um, because it's not really too bad. And uh, they were... I mean, they enjoyed it, but they, they were like, I don't want to watch old Indiana Jones. Let's watch young Indiana Jones. So I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe not. Not yet. But, Mike, so we finally just watched um, Harry Potter, um, oh, nice. the Deathly Hollows, the two Deathly Hollows movies. All right. Cool, cool. Um, well, what... We finished that over Christmas break. Um, nice. And the kids, like, they did pretty good with it. And, you know, it, we had to, you know, say, hey, you know, a lot of people are going to die. You know, these are a lot of the characters that you guys are invested in. You know, so, yeah, just be warned. Uh, so I think we're going to try... We it, it's not that we haven't let them watch PG movie PG thirteen, yeah. but we haven't let them watch like the darker PG thirteen. Yeah, movie. I mean they've watched the Jurassic Parks. Uh, Chuck watched <clears throat> the end of Jaws. They really want to watch Jaws, so we might let them watch Jaws. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I think we're gonna get them on Stranger Things. I think this year we're gonna try Stranger Things. Oh, and I know we're gonna do uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Nice. Um, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to get them on back to the future. I've not necessarily, they've been wanting to watch it. My kids would care. I, I, I think, think, I think my kids will like it, but that's the thing. It's, there's some, there's some, I don't know if my youngest will like it. I know my oldest will, will, uh, but there's I, some stuff you have to be old enough to understand why, what's going on with the movies. They're not necessarily dark. They just, you got to get it right. You got to figure out why they're I, doing it. I, I think that. For our kid generation, I just don't see my kids. So it, it's one of the few ones where I, where I my gut feeling is that I it's know not they're like it. not going to give a crap at uh, all. They've been asking, well, especially since Ready Player One, they're all about the DeLorean. Yeah. And so we'll I mean, try and we'll yeah, try my and son that. watched Ready Player One a crap load of times. Oh yeah, so. it's it's always on at my house. That I'm told you, man. I I think that was my favorite movie of last year. I'm really I love that movie. Uh, let's see what else we're gonna let them watch. Um, they keep wanting to watch Predator. I do not think they'll be ready for that yet. Yeah, I think I was about my son's age when I saw Predator. Um, They've been asking to watch the Bond movies. I'll probably let them watch the Bond. They love Mission Impossible and Fast and Furious, so I'll probably let them watch the Bond movie. Yeah, I think we were gonna let them watch. Um, uh, which one was it? I'm gonna let the them watch Deadpool two, the PG thirteen version, when it comes out on Blu-ray. They've been dying to see that. This version. <laughs> Dude, they've wanted to watch Deadpool since the moment it came out, and they do not understand. And then in their defense, I get it. I've let them watch every other superhero movie, but uh, sorry, Deadpool's out. <laughs> there, there, there is a fine line. Yeah, there's definitely a fine line. I might let they've been wanting to. I might let them watch Alien vs Predator. That's only PG thirteen. They've been wanting to watch those movies, so uh, <laughs> kind of break them in slowly to the bat. But, but then again, I'm not saying want to ruin them either. I mean, they'll probably think it's awesome. They'll probably think, this movie's great. I want them to watch, but they're not, I don't know, they rated, like, the, yeah, they're all rated R. God, yeah, all that's the, the hard that part. I, a lot of the good stuff's rated R. You know, this is kind of more, I think this is the more territory with the older PG, you know, so like the, the Indiana Joneses, the little, the kind of dark, the Stranger Things, the stuff that's a little scary, but it's not too bad. Yeah. I think it, the harder the hard part for me is that my kids get like super emotionally invo- invested in characters. Oh, and then when and they so get so waxed, they're gonna be so mad when Barb dies. Oh boy, they're just, <laughs> they're just get all blubby. I'll probably let Addison watch Titanic this year. <laughs> oh my God! Don't no. She's Titanic. been wanting to watch Titanic forever. She's going to be watching that, like, she's going to nope. watch that movie, like, 60 times. Chuck will sneak in, and the only thing she's going to laugh about is be like, oh, I saw her boobs on <laughs> <laughs> My daughter is crazy, but uh, I'm trying to think what else is there. Um, you know, those are kind of the big ones I came up with, Indiana Jones, Stranger Things. Uh, you know, TV shows. Right, that's rated R. So. Yeah, there's not a lot of TV shows they really want to watch, right? I mean, I can't let them watch Titans yet. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not Titans. It's a good show. No, I am up to episode eight right now. Um, so. I'll probably let them watch the Dark Knight. They haven't watched the the Dark Knight series because those Batman's are a little violent for them. So mm. probably, <clears throat> I'll probably let them watch those. But well, we'll see. Kind of getting those more. Well, I'll let the. Well, it's weird. So my oldest, my youngest, is like she's a gangster. She's just like I don't care. She'll watch it about anything and just you know my older is the one. My oldest is the one who. Plus, my youngest is still at that age where it doesn't really sink in yet. 
but the oldest is at the age where like she starts like you said she gets invested in when people die it's like she was really sad what happened to padme and and i will say real quick watching revenge of the sith she was like oh you know she was super sad that that padme died but at the same time she was like I don't know why she likes Anakin. He's kind of a whiny baby. <laughs> like, right. You you and everybody else in that time hey, period. We've all been wondering the exact same goddamn thing. George Lucas, yeah. that's bad writing. <laughs> but, and and what kind of a woman, you know, has like an eight-year-old friend that she then, when that eight-year-old friend grows up, she marries them. Yeah, she was and, like 16 uh, or 15. This is weird. Yeah. And he was such a creeper. I've thought about you every day in my dreams for 10 years. Okay, stalker. Ugh. Every Ugh. day? Ugh. Come on, man. I thought about you like once or twice. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I kind of remembered you around, but, you know. Yeah, you're that creepy slave kid we rescued for Tatooine. Who made me a <laughs> necklace. Such a weird gesture. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, there you go. We'd love to hear what you guys plan on letting your kids watch. Uh... This year, what's your plan on introducing them to, and uh, what we should if we miss something? Because you know our list was so in depth, especially yeah. Ryan, who mostly just told us movies he already let his kids watch. I'm glad to see we, you came prepared our, for the segment, Ryan. God, we, we heavily mandate what our kids are allowed to watch. I know we can tell. Are they, you going to let them watch all the the Marvel movies this year? Uh, my son really wants to get into them, so I think we're gonna we're gonna start all tomorrow. Maybe we'll just start with like Iron Man and just work our way up. Well, you definitely should. All right, so real quick before we get out of here, from the fifth fifty, we got a couple questions. You got them uh, cute, or you want me to pull them up? Let's see. We did have one. Ooh, Jeff snuck one in. So we'll oh, start with Jeff. That Jeff always sneaking one in. Good old Jeff. So he wants to know, do you think the success of Aquaman could possibly keep the current DCEU afloat? I don't know. Maybe. They are so confused over there. They don't know what the hell they're talking. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just throwing out movies as much as humanly possible. I am. I know I know where you're leaning with this, Jeff, because I was thinking the same thing. Will, uh, will an A-list, one of the, one of the main members of the justice league one of the macho men members of the justice league allow the other one aka superman to finally get man of two man of steel two you know I, fuck i don't know i don't know what dc thinks they take all the wrong messages from what they do i mean well and we have no idea what their what their goal is with all these movies i mean it seems like they're just going. They're going to toss out everything from Justice League. Well, I mean, and not just that. They could look at Aquaman and say, "Ooh, this movie's really weird." So we're going to make even weirder movies, and everybody will love them over in China. And it's like, I, I, I don't know. I hope. Do I hope you so. a weird Superman movie? No, I just want a good Man of Steel movie. Give me Brainiac. I mean, you can make it weird. Just give me Brainiac, or you know. Actually, just give me Brainiac. I want Brainiac. I've never seen Brainiac in a movie. I want him in a movie. Why don't you just go watch Krypton again? So. I don't want to do that. I want to watch Brainiac in a, in a real movie. But, uh, I mean, there's so many great Superman stories. I just want more. I love Henry Cavill as Superman. I want more Superman. Um, you know, I don't think the current DCEU is that bad, honestly, other than the fact that Justice League was a disaster, partially because it had multiple directors. And they tried to course correct once the movie was already shot, which is a mistake. I'm not a f- big fan of Ezra Miller as the Flash, but everybody else, I really like the cast, and I, I'd love to see more Affleck as Batman. I'd like to see more Cavell as Superman. I love Gale as as Wonder Woman, and obviously Jason Momoa is great as Aquaman. In some ways, I think it'd been easier for DC if Aquaman would have tanked, and then they could have just kind of quietly rebooted this. Now, unfortunately, because Aquaman's a huge hit and Gale's, you know, Wonder Woman's a huge hit. I mean, really, I hope the lesson they're learning is, hey, Aquaman and Wonder Woman made $2 billion between the two of them. Maybe if we just get really good directors who have a vision yeah, and get, make good movies. Finish the movie. Man of Steel did really well, too. Batman v Superman did really good. Justice mm-hmm. League is really the only one that just was a shitty movie, like, as far as box office-wise. Suicide Squad did well. And we all know why, because they had two directors, and, and they lost, and they had, like you said, they had course correction in the middle, and... 
I mean, honestly, the only movie that they've made that's been a financial disappointment is Justice League. So honestly, and, and that was only a financial disappointment because you guys listen way too much to the internet. Tell yeah. critics to shut the fuck up, turn off your Twitter account, and just make good movies. And if the yeah. fans don't like them, whatever. Just, I mean, Batman v Superman still made $800 million. Clearly yeah. somebody liked it. Movies that nobody likes do not make money. And that's true. And so, the DCU, I think they're just going to keep going. They're just going to keep rolling with no, it. And they're going to they're gonna hit their, they're going to find their stride. Nobody is going to love you the way that they love Marvel. I don't know what it is about the yeah. MCU that has resonated with people. Because honestly, if you start breaking down a lot of those movies, they have some of the same issues that the DC movies have. But for whatever reason, they can do no wrong. And nobody says anything bad about it. Ant-Man and the Wasp was a terrible movie. Honestly, mm. I was bored in the movie. It was just a movie, not a fan of it. And yet, nobody even talked badly about it at all, and it still made a ton of money. So, just DC, Warner Brothers, don't listen to people. Just make your movies. Make them. <laughs> if they make $800, $900 million, and just keep making them. But don't make two joking movies. Ugh. Ugh. Well, whatever. That's I've heard the Joaquin that. Phoenix one is going to be great, so whatever. I'll go see it. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jeff, for the question. So we had another one from Chris, and uh, he says, first off, that he enjoyed Venom way more than he enjoyed Solo. He just wanted you to hey, know listen, that. You're, Think- you're entitled to be completely wrong in your opinion, Chris. Um, and so he wants to know, do you think Marvel will ever introduce Better Ray Bill or Norm Nomar? Namor. Namor. Or he was going for Namor. That's what I... When I was, I was typing it in, and like, who's Nomar? I'm guessing Namor is who he means, because I've never heard of a Nomar. The Submariner. Yeah. Um. So, Namor, there's some problems with that. Honestly, uh, Universal, I believe, still has the right. So, it was there was some distribution issues. That's why, the, that's why they don't make a Hulk standalone movie, is because they'd have to share it with the profits with Universal. Uh, I believe Namor is under that wing of it, so I don't know if they're going to make one. And then everyone's going to make the Aquaman comparison. Yeah, so. I mean, will they do it? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe after Marvel's seen how much money this uh, Aquaman's made, they may be more pressed to try and talk to Universal and get that character back. Um, I don't know. <coughs> Nam- Namor isn't like Aquaman, though. He's a different type of... He's kind of a dick. Uh- tiny wings on his ankle to make yeah, him fly. And he's, and he's honestly more of a villain half the time than he is a good guy, so... Yeah, you know, I mean, the comparisons are going to be there with Aquaman, but he's not Marvel's Aquaman. I mean, yes, there are some similarities, but he's not the same character. I don't know. I have no, honestly no desire to see a Namor movie. Like, I, I'd like to see him in a movie, but maybe not like his own movie. So I don't mm-hmm. know, we'll see. Uh, and as far as Bill, I mean, I think they could definitely do him like in Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, or technically, anything. he's already been introduced in uh, Thor Ragnarok. His face is on the Wall of Champions, the uh, the Building of Champions. So, so well, yeah, will they do it? Yeah, like to your point, Ryan, I could see, I could see Guardians introduce him. I mean, the more cosmic as Marvel continues to get more and more cosmic, there's it's it's inevitable that it's going to happen. All their cosmic characters will eventually be, and you know. Listen, if Marvel keeps going for another 20 years, they are literally going to soak every last drop out of every character they have. Yes. And everyone's going to love it. So I say survey says that there's a good chance. Uh, And then we had on my, uh, I shared the post, we had one more question from Christine. She, oh, and Christine, I have not forgotten about your Fandango gift card. I just didn't have power last weekend and it was a little crazy. Uh, So when I get a chance to go pick you up one, I will be sending you some information so oh yeah for being the best you get gift cards uh she wants to know okay she wants to know what is our favorite dinner eating at home made at home she's in a dinner rut and she's looking for new ideas (laughs) dinner that you make at home um i'm a oh you go ahead well i have two things that my wife makes that are my favorites one is the simplest thing that you can do just chicken broth or no, first she she does uh, onions, carrots, and celery, and mm-hmm. puts them in a big pot, and sautés it all with some butter, and then she pours in a whole bunch of chicken stock and um, some like shell noodles, and you got yourself a noodle soup. 
Nice. Super easy. And then she makes it like with cornbread or biscuits or something like that. I Literally too make, my, my favorite soup in the whole world. I still I too make chicken noodle soup. I just get it from a Campbell's can. Well, there's no chicken in it. It's just noodle soup with, you know, celery and onions and carrots. But it's super good. You've it's been living super... in the old country too long. But my my absolute favorite thing is uh, she makes a spicy pulled pork with a cilantro um, coleslaw. Mm. So good. So good. It makes my mouth water just thinking uh, about it. Well, for me, I make uh, I make a mean chicken quesadilla. <laughs> I also make a mean uh, chicken not chicken chili nachos, white chicken and chili nachos. Uh, lately, though, I, I'm a big breakfast guy, so I make a lot of breakfast burritos and breakfast omelets and oh, pancakes. Yeah, I'm always making breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. Hash brown. I make a really good hash brown scramble in my air fryer. You can cook the potatoes so you're not deep frying them, but you get the fried taste to them. It's pretty good. Uh, mm. My wife, Holly, loves making uh, it's tater tot casserole. It's a simple thing, but it's amazing. Tater tots, mm -hmm. cream of mushroom, and ground hamburger. Uh, my absolute favorite homemade dish uh, my wife can't really make, but uh, anybody who can make it, I eat the hell out of it. Homemade lasagna. I love homemade lasagna. So you do you like the like fresh homemade noodles and stuff, or do you... Well, they don't have to be homemade noodles. You can get them from a store, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Our, our good friend our good friend Bella makes a, a lasagna that is freaking amazing. So every time she's like, hey, do you want me to make anything? I'm like, lasagna, make lasagna. I love <laughs> lasagna. So, um, I don't know. A good classic in my family is, is soup and, and uh, soup and sandwiches, man. I'll grill, make some grilled cheese sandwiches and some soup. Yeah. So I'm kind of a boring. We eat a lot of sandwiches oh, in my house. We eat a lot of simple. We've been doing is we got a big thing of garlic salt that from like Costco. Mm-hmm. And we'll put garlic salt, or we put butter and stuff in the pan, and then sprinkle in a bunch of garlic salt, and mix it in with the butter. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting your grilled cheese on there, it gets a little garlic salt uh, flavoring on it. Nice. So good. Yeah. Well, I mean, Christine, we're the wrong. I'm the wrong person to ask, honestly, about meals because me and Holly both work. We're usually like whatever's the easiest and fastest we can make is usually what we make. So. Yeah. Mac and cheese and <laughs> well tonight I made uh, I made turkey sandwich wraps for dinner and mm. the kids got kids got oatmeal they like oatmeal so yeah tomorrow though I'm probably gonna I buy this uh, fresh turkey breast from Costco I think I'm gonna cut it up and usually I make some uh, turkey turkey melted turkey Havarti sandwiches Sam you you do a lot of sandwiches make sandwiches we're sandwich <laughs> family shut your mouth Ryan. Anyway, all right, everybody, thank you for the questions. As always, you guys are amazing. Uh, and you guys always come with some great stuff, except for Chris. Chris, nobody likes you. Solo was amazing. You know it was. Quit lying to yourself. Just accept it, I guess. All right. Uh, and then real quickly, before we get out of here, uh, got a quick couple quick, rec very quick recommendations. Ryan, as always, would you like to go first? Yes. Uh, so for, for Christmas, my son is uh we've been playing dungeons and dragons for like the last almost like six months um and so he wanted to try and do something that was more in outer space so for christmas i found this starfinder this is the whole, this is a dungeon master and players guidebook it's all all in one big thing um so basically it's there's no uh, dungeons in space it's yeah uh, you get to pick your bunch of different alien races. My son picked like a rat guy, rat race, and he's a mechanic. Um, and he can keep, he's got a pouch thing where he keeps a grenade in his uh, chin pouch. Oh, um, seems dangerous. Yeah. And uh, so there's just like, you know, like tons of spaceships and aliens and, you know, okay. stuff like that. You get, you start off with your own spaceship. So that's what we did tonight. We designed uh, his spaceship that he's going to have for his crew. What's it called? Starfinder? It's, yeah, it's called Starfinder. Where um, you, it's where made you by it Pez. You know, they also have um, Pathfinder, which is the, the game that they originally created. I got them, you know, uh, it's based off of uh, um, Dungeons and Dragons, I think, 4. 
uh, fourth edition where they kind of like they took some of the rules and stuff from to make Pathfinder and they just kind of expanded it um, from there. But it's, I think it's Pazio or Pazio is the name of the company. Um, so we kind of we just started our first adventure uh, tonight. Uh, I had him to he, his ship was all crashed and smashed up and he had to rebuild it. Um, so uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it's nice. very it's very cool. He's been like reading it every night. He's he's almost read the whole thing cover to cover. He knows everything about all the alien races nice. and you know stuff like that. And he's super excited to. He just wants to. Uh, he spent. He, you only get so many points to use for your ship, you know. For so you can't just be like, oh, right, I'm just gonna put you know the biggest guns and stuff on it. So, but he he saved up a lot of his points so he could put some pretty big ass guns on his ship and he's just going to go around him. he just said he just wants to fly around and just start blasting stuff right, so sounds fun well hey you know whatever can get kids to use their imagination and uh and place to have some fun playing yeah. games tabletop but, uh, gaming all right starfinder check it out if you're into if you're into that kind of nerdery check it out yes all right uh my recommendation this week is kind of a recommendation uh i don't know why my voice got so high there for a second I started watching this show on Netflix, a new series called Tidelands. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for genre TV. Um, mm. I love like CW type shows. I watch the hundred. I watch all the Arrowverse shows. Um, yes. And this kind of scratched that itch. So I started watching it. It's uh, basically, it's about uh, sirens. So sirens, if you're up to your, uh, up on your Greek mythology, sirens are daughters of Poseidon, I think who lure fishermen. They're basically demons who lure fishermen to their deaths. And they have sex with them in the sea and they drown them, right? So, um, you know, the siren, the call of the siren, right? That's where the word sirens come from. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in this show, the, the spawn of those fishermen that they, that they you know, have sex with and lure to their death, um, the sirens would get pregnant and then they'd have these half siren, half human babies that they would leave on shore. Well, they formed a whole community called the Tidelanders and uh, basically, Thailanders, what they are is they have powers. So they can they can make men do what they want them to do. They can breathe underwater. They live incredibly long lives. And so this show is basically there's a colony of Thailanders, and there's a whole bunch of uh, 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 there's a there's like a drug ring that the Thailanders get the drugs and these guys sell them. I don't know. It's not really completely fleshed out why why they're doing the drugs or where they come from, but. There's kind of a deeper mythology there with the sirens. Listen, this is a kind of a bad show. I'm not even gonna lie. It's kind it's of a animated or no. It's or, live action. Or, it's on. It's on. It's on Netflix. It's it's only eight episodes. The episodes range from thirty to forty five minutes. So it's not. So you can blow through it pretty fast. Now I'll say this: it's a cross between a soap opera and a really like I don't know a CW show, but it's basically rated R. There is sex and nudity out the yang. There is violence. There are people getting their throats slit and eyeballs ripped out. Uh, and uh, but it has the but it feels like a C a, a cheesy CW show with yeah. superpowers. I I don't know. I really kind of enjoyed it. It's an all Australian cast except for the main lead female. Um, I forget her name, but I believe she's from Brazil. She's married to Chris Helmsworth, so she's basically oh, okay. she is Australian by uh, by marriage. And so the entire cast is in Australia. It's shot in Australia. It's beautiful beaches and oceans. And every time I watch it, I'm like, I just want to go on vacation. And yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of an addictive corn. It's a cheesy addictive show that was actually really fun to watch. And I don't know. Like I said, if you like, if you like CW shows and you're looking for something corny, that's, uh, that's kind of fun. And it's not too long. I check out Thailand, Thailanders yeah. on Netflix. Sounds good. So, all right, there we go. And before we get out of here, Ryan, would you like to tell everybody where they can find us? You can find us on YouTube at The Geek Dad Report and Facebook at The Geek Dad Report and Twitter at The Geek Dad Report. Brian is Brian West 53 on Twitter, and I am Big Bruiser. We're also on PodHell.com with our friend, The Utah Outcast. Yes. And you can also find us on iTunes. And make sure that you leave a comment or give us a five-star rating or a thumbs up or whatever the social media platform asks and, for. If you could just do it for us, we would greatly appreciate and Ryan it. And Ryan has been working very hard to update all of our yeah. iTunes stuff. Yes, we've gotten uh, – I've been doing like three or four a day. I've been getting them up. So 
iTunes are getting up there. A lot of stuff for you to listen to. Yes. You tell 10 friends. 10. Yeah. Tell your friends. Like, recommend. The you know already said if we're not over 100 subscribers by the end of the year, Geek Dad Report is done. Finished. Yeah. We're just going to slit his throat. Yep. I'm going to bury it in the backyard and move on with our lives. So, uh, on that note, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoy the show. If not, it's free, so it's too bad. Until next time, stay awesome. And stay nerdy, everyone.